We've been on quite the roll with the travel theme videos, so I thought I'd keep it going and walk you through what's in my travel bag. It's been a little bit since I've done an update. I'm going to walk you through my clothes, tech, toiletries, miscellaneous stuff, everything I pack with me whenever I'm flying, and it's carry-on only, of course, around here. So without any further ado, let's get into the first category. Clothing is always one of the toughest categories to really dial in and stay light with. I always like to focus on what I'm wearing as much as what I'm carrying, because when you're traveling really light, what you wear to the airport plays a huge role in how little you can pack here. So starting off with the worn clothes. For pants, my main and only pair of pants for the trip, I've still been a huge fan of the Proof Rover pants. They're a little bit heavier weight, so you might want to look into something like Western Rise if you're going to a really hot climate, but these do actually have some kind of climate control type of properties in the fabric. Uh, they kind of feel like more of a canvassy work pant or a piece of denim. Super comfortable. I think the drape is great. They look great. Super versatile as well. You can kind of dress them up or down depending on what you need. Uh, these have been my go-to since I first found them a couple of years ago now. For my top half, I have a t-shirt from Wooly. Uh, these are some of my favorite merino wool t-shirts. I think the cut and the fit and drape and the weight of the fabric is all really nice. The price is pretty reasonable too. I think they're around $65. For a sweater to put over that, I actually have a newer pickup of mine. This is from Paco Apparel. It's just called The Hoodie. Been a big fan of alpaca wool for some time. I have the Appalachian Gear Company hoodie as well that's made of 100% alpaca wool. This is actually a blend with alpaca wool and recycled nylon. It's super soft and still really lightweight. Alpaca wool is incredibly odor resistant. That's why it works so well for outdoor backpacking when you're sweaty and stinky. They have a really fun story on their website for the manufacturing. They're made in Peru and these are actually all hand signed by the weavers that create them in Peru. Overall, I've been really impressed. I'll probably do a deeper dive at some point in one of my apparel videos. Uh, for socks and underwear, I've got the ex officio boxer briefs. These have been my favorite and default go-to for a number of years now. I've hiked thousands of miles miles in them. I've done all of my traveling in them. They've been absolutely perfect for me. And for socks, um, I have been exploring some alternative options compared to my long-standing default of Darn Tough. Uh, these are from American Trench. They are the retro stripe sock that they're famous for, but made in merino wool. I think these are seasonal, so I'm not sure if they're available right now. If not, I'll put the cotton ones down. Uh, definitely not quite the same durability as Darn Tough, but uh, aesthetics and comfort, they are very nice. They're a little bit softer and nicer on the foot themselves, and they just look really great, I think. Last up for my worn clothes, I have the Norda 001 Trail Runners. I picked these up last year. I've been really happy with them. I think they are a great kind of more versatile travel shoe. This is always a really tough thing to solve. Uh, I really like boots and I really like sneakers. Trying to narrow down to a single pair of shoes for a trip is always difficult, but these are really nice because they're definitely nice enough to wear around the city, but they have a really good tread and lug pattern. If you do go on any impromptu hikes wherever you're going, I always look for good hikes when I'm traveling out and about. They're super lightweight, super comfortable. They have a really nice wide toe box. These definitely fit the bill for me in general. Got that stuff out of the way. Moving into my packed clothes. Again, I like to keep things extremely simple. Uh, for this, you know, it's springtime, the weather's relatively mild, so I kind of planned and packed for a relatively mild trip here. Packing cube I'm using is from Tripped Travel Gear. I've been really happy with it. It has some compression in there, which is nice. Getting in my other packed shirts, I've got two more merino wool t-shirts. Another one from Wooly and another one from Proof with their 72 hour merino line. These are two of my favorites, but they're definitely a little bit different. I tend to like the cut and the fit of the Wooly one a bit more. The Proof ones are a little bit thinner and a little bit softer, so I would have to imagine most people would probably prefer these. But um, I lost a ton of weight a long time ago and my skin just doesn't look the best. So drape on different fabrics is really important for me. I feel like the woolly t-shirts are just a little bit more flattering if you don't have like a really great athletic type of body. Aside from the pack t-shirts, I am bringing a sun hoodie with me as well. Um, I really love traveling with sun hoodies if I'm going to be spending a lot of time outside. I'm like a vampire. I burn in like 20 or 30 minutes without any good sun exposure and having to worry about sunblock and all of that is a pain. Sun hoodies are a much better option if you want to just keep things simple and easy. Uh, this one's from Howler Brothers. It's their loggerhead hoodie. Compared to all of my other sun hoodies, uh, I've been really happy with this. It's a little bit more feature rich than most everything else I've tried in the past. 
Uh, one, the aesthetics, you know, I think it's kind of a fun outdoorsy type of vibe with all the Howler Brothers gear, but you have a full kangaroo pocket in the front, which is something I've never had in any of my sun hoodies. And then you also have a little back secret stash pouch back here, which is extremely nice. Has a microfiber lining as well if you want to clean your glasses off. I always have a microfiber with me, but you know, maybe you don't when you're hiking out and about. My Rover pants are my one and only pair of pants for day to day. That's worked out really well for me on quite a few trips at this point. But I do like to bring a pair of shorts with me as well, just as an alternative option if it gets warm, but mainly just to have to lounge around wherever I'm staying. Uh, these are the Proof Trail Shorts. I've had these for two or three years now, I think. They're really nice for hiking and that sort of stuff, but they're super comfortable just to lounge around in. Um, really can't recommend those enough. I think they still make these. I'm not really sure. I've had these for a long, long time now. I've uh, been really happy with them, though. Uh, for underwear, just two more pair of the Ex Officio Give and Go Boxer Briefs. And for socks, again, I've been trying some other brands out and uh, just seeing what's out there aside from Darn Tough. Uh, this is actually a pair from Packa Apparel that makes that hoodie that we just talked about. Uh, these are really nice and soft, definitely not thick enough to be like a winter sock or a boot sock, but uh, really nice and soft and comfortable. You get all of those anti-smell properties as well, just like merino wool, alpaca wool has a lot of those same benefits. And then I've also been trying out a couple of pairs from Worn. I would say these rival the durability of the Darn Tough so far in my initial testing, but they're a little bit more comfortable because they have a lot of strategic stretch points. Uh, these are one of their like hiking socks. I got a pair of their thicker like boot socks as well that I've talked about in the past. Uh, so far, I've been really impressed with these. I was glad to see so many of you wanted to uh, have me do a proper sock video to go along with the boot video that we did a few weeks ago. I'm definitely getting on it and doing some research and checking things out to see what else is out there besides, you know, our favorite darn toughs. Before we get into the full tech loadout, I want to take a couple minutes and introduce you to the new Anchor Prime Power Bank lineup. Uh, Anchor was kind enough to sponsor this week's video as well, so a huge thanks to them. We talked about it a little bit the other week, but I'm really excited to get into more detail for this one here. This is the Anchor Prime 27,650 milliamp hour power bank 250 watt. This is definitely my new favorite out of all the power banks I've tested. The feature set that this thing has along with the tiny size and capacity is completely unreal. It has a total potential output of 250 watts. It supports PD 3.1 fast charging tech. You have two USB-C ports that each get up to 140 watts as well as a USB-A port that gets up to 65 watts. This can charge a 16 inch MacBook Pro up to 50% in 28 minutes. It has a total capacity of 27,600 150 milliamp hours, which comes out to 99.5 watt hours. So it's basically the maximum allowed size to still be TSA compliant with that under 100 watt hour rule for flying. And for that level of capacity, the thing is about the size of a soda can. It is absolutely tiny. Having something with this much output can be a real lifesaver when you're traveling, especially if you're working out and about on the go, like we talked about the other week. Sometimes you don't know where you'll have power access if you need to charge your devices or get work done or anything like that having something like really dependable with a ton of storage here is really great. We're getting closer and closer to the capabilities of big power generators in, you know, little compact battery size here. You have a really nice digital display that'll show the input and output and capacity, but you also have the option to monitor and control things from the built-in smart app. It has real-time stats for the input and output. You have the option to optimize the charging to extend the life of the battery, which is always really nice to see. And something else I've never seen on a battery, you have a find device feature here that'll have this make a sound if you've misplaced it so you can locate it a little bit easier. App runs super smooth. I've actually used it for quite some time with my F2000 power station. Uh, being able to have kind of that level of control in something this small and tiny is just really incredible. It can actually recharge up to 170 watts with the dual USB-C inputs. That'll get you a full charge in 37 minutes. Alternatively to that, they actually make a charge 
charging base so you can charge it completely wirelessly. This is the Anchor 100 watt charging base for Anchor Prime Power. Uh, this is essentially a little USB-C GAN charging hub with a built-in magnetic wireless charger for the batteries as well. It goes a lot more than just being able to charge the batteries because on the side here you have two USB-C outputs as well as a USB-A output. And then it has an AC plug that is external which is really nice especially in a travel situation. You know if you're not really sure how far the outlet is going to be this can kind of work as an extension cord slash USB-C charging hub as well as being able to charge up the batteries. It's basically just a GAN charger with a ton of extra features. So the Anchor Prime 250 watt power bank and the charging base have both definitely made it into my travel kit. Alternatively though if you want something a little bit different a little bit smaller this is the Anchor Prime 20,000 milliamp hour power bank 200 watt. As the name states this is 20,000 milliamp hour hours or 72 watt hours and you get up to 200 watts of total output and it's even smaller than the 250 watt version. You have two USB-C ports that both work up to 100 watts and you have a USB-A port that'll work up to 65 watts. What's really clever with this one you can run both USB-C ports together at a full 100 watts each so it makes it a really ideal thing for a couple or anyone that has two different laptops that you need to charge simultaneously when you're out on the road. It can charge a 16 inch MacBook Pro up to 50% in 40 minutes. This one doesn't have the smart app monitoring but you still get a really great display to monitor the input and the output and the overall capacity. And the recharge speed is up to 100 watts so you can recharge this thing fully in one hour and 15 minutes. Anchor Prime's slogan is charge everything everywhere faster all at once and I definitely can't agree more. These are some of the most feature rich and polished batteries I have ever tested. Anchor has always been so dependable with all of the tech I've used from them for you know probably 15 plus years at this point. Uh, I've been really impressed with these and I'm definitely looking forward to adding them into my travel kit. Be sure to check the links in the description down below if you want to check them out for yourself. Huge thanks again to Anchor for sponsoring this week's video. So getting in the rest of my tech, this is definitely my like full tech loadout. It will vary a lot depending on the trip. I don't always bring my laptop with me, so that cuts a lot of this stuff out if I don't need my laptop. But I just recently upgraded my laptop, so I'm definitely bringing it with me for the foreseeable future. This is the 16-inch M3 Max. Uh, this thing has been absolutely incredible. Coming from my old like six, seven year old laptop that could barely handle anything, uh, this thing I haven't been able to even come close to maxing it out with the performance. Uh, editing videos is completely effortless. I feel like I'm editing, you know, like 480p cell phone footage or something with multiple streams of 4K video in there. It's incredible and fast and everything I hoped for. Uh, maybe I'll do like a longer term full review of this at some point, but impressions are excellent so far. This new space black color is definitely full of fingerprints, so don't believe whatever their anti-fingerprint stuff is that they've talked about before. But aside from the laptop and the batteries that we already talked about, uh, my tech pouch, this is the Civic Access pouch, I believe it's called, from Evergoods. Really impressed with the layout and design of this thing. I talked about it in quite a bit of detail uh, a couple months back. Incredibly happy with that though. Ton of polish and the layout is super unique and also useful. A few other cables I'm bringing. I've got my MagTame cables. I brought a 60 watt and a 240 watt with me. Been loving these things. As you all know, I've been talking about them so much lately. As well as the InCharge XL cable. This is just a little six in one kind of multi purpose cable. If you have legacy tech with micro USB or Lightning, anything like that. One cable kind of covers it all. Um, and on that note of legacy tech, I've got my original Kindle Paperwhite. I bought this back in 2013. Battery life's not great, but it's still working so far. Um, I've been loving uh, Shogun. I don't know if anyone else is watching Shogun right now. It should be wrapping up pretty soon after this video goes live, but I've been obsessed. I actually just downloaded the book to read the original book that it was based on. So really excited for that. Uh, another newer pickup in addition for me is a travel router. This is the GL.INET Slate AX travel router. Really incredible. Um, I talked about this in a ton of detail the other week, so I won't bore everyone to death. But one thing I didn't really touch on much in that video was the added security aspects with this. Being able to run a VPN directly off the router uh, saves a ton of time compared to having to set up VPNs on all of your devices, especially for the devices that you might not be able to run a VPN on. So this is a great little pickup and well worth the extra space. I've got my hard drive to get some work done while I'm traveling. This is the Samsung T. 
SSD. Uh, really great and fast and durable. It's got this sort of like soft touch coating on there for some drop resistance. Got an AirTag tracker, always good to track your luggage. Got my AirPods Pro. Um, I go back and forth with carrying, you know, bigger over ear headphones. They're a little bit nicer and more comfortable, but they take up a ton of extra space. The AirPods Pro usually work well for me. This is the Gen 2, but still with lightning. Almost forgot to mention, I've got my phone. It's the iPhone 14 Pro Max. And with that, I have the Moft Invisible Tripod Stand. I've talked about this thing so many times as well. I absolutely love it. Just super convenient. If you want to take photos while you're on the go, or if you want to set it up on the plane or on a nightstand to watch TV, uh, just really nice, really convenient, and you know, basically the size of a couple of credit cards. Um, outside of that, I've got my battery charging base. This is my main like charging brick right now. Uh, I think this should more than cover me for everything I need here. And then the battery, of course, that we already talked about. But that is it for the tech. I shouldn't say that is it. I feel like this is a lot more than I would typically bring on some trips, but kind of my full tech loadout. Moving into my dop kit and toiletries. This is something, again, that I will tailor quite a bit from trip to trip. This is my current liquid-free setup if I don't want to deal with the hassle of, you know, the 100 mil limits and the clear plastic bags for TSA and all of that stuff. The DOP kit I've been liking for some time now is from Air. I think they just call it the DOP kit. I'm not entirely sure the name. Um, I'll put a link in the description, of course, but really great layout and just the right amount of space for me generally. Not too much that's taking up unnecessary space and not too little where I'm having to cram everything in here. I've got a couple of the Matador dry soap bags, one with a solid moisturizer, one with the Beard Brand utility bar. Really big fan of the Beard Brand products in general. I use their liquid versions of things when I'm home. I also use the sea salt spray. I've been growing out my hair. I don't know if all of you've noticed under my hat. Uh, that'll be unveiled at some point when it's ready. But I really like their beard oil and their cologne and their utility wash and softener in the liquid form. I use all that stuff at home, but usually we'll just bring the utility bar with me when I'm out traveling. Works as shampoo and soap. Uh, overall, really, really nice. I've got my clip nail clippers. Uh, I talked about these for my gift guide and still just absolutely love them. They actually have won awards for the design here. You know, something a little bit different from the typical cheap nail clippers. Definitely going to pay for it, but they're really nice and should last a lifetime. I've got these little pill bottles I picked up from Garage Grown Gear for backpacking, but really good for regular travel as well, uh, just to keep some ibuprofen in there in case you get a headache or something while you're on the road. Beats, you know, spending a ton of extra money if you can even find ibuprofen wherever you're at. I've got a little comb for my beard. This is the Beard Brand Pocket Comb. I will sometimes bring the little Beard Brand Travel Brush as well. It's a little bit nicer, but this saves a bit of extra space. Got a regular old toothbrush right now, no special travel one. I would like to find a good folding toothbrush. I used to get one from Muji but they seem to stop carrying it last I checked. Uh, toothpaste tabs, little dry toothpaste that you just crunch up in your mouth and brush your teeth. Really, really nice. I've got my little cheap basic deodorant. I've got my AG1 packets, not a sponsor. I wish they would, honestly. Uh, I've been taking AG1 on and off for like 15 years now. Last but not least, I've got a little towel from Sea to Summit. This is the Airlight towel. I've been wanting to venture in and try some Turkish towels. I know a lot of people that travel a lot more than me really like those Turkish towels. They take up a little bit more space. That's why I've been hesitant to check them out, but I've been really wanting to uh, give that a look. Let me know if you have any experience with them uh, down in the comments. But this is just a little thin, quick drying towel. Really great if you're doing any kind of adventure type of stuff and just need an impromptu towel. Doesn't take up very much space and can really come in handy if you need it. Got a few miscellaneous type of items to cover up next. Uh, first up being my coffee gear. I usually will always bring some form of coffee gear with me. Uh, most commonly, I'll bring the AeroPress Go. Talked about that thing a ton. It is excellent and tiny and just super versatile and makes really great coffee, especially with limited resources and how you can make it. You know, it's a little bit more forgiving than a pour over if you're in a difficult situation. Um, and then on top of that, I do really like bringing, this is the uh, Vissel Vessel Coffee Grinder. I always forget if it's Vissel or Vessel with their consonants only name. Uh, this thing is excellent though. They just recently changed their lineup now. I think the only differences are the capacity options that they have now, but this one holds uh, 20 grams. I think they make a 30 gram one now. Really incredible grind. Having freshly ground beans makes a huge difference in the overall quality of your coffee. 
And something I usually forget to mention, but always get questions about is what do I do about beans? Uh, a lot of times I will try and buy beans wherever I'm going. If it's a place with roasters around, like a lot of big cities will do, I like exploring and trying local beans because that's always just more fun for someone that likes coffee. But if I do need to bring them with me, I'll just use like a little reusable bag type of thing, put my beans in here. And I've been looking for an ideal sort of container to bring around my coffee setup. Uh, right now I've got the packed five liter sling bag. Uh, this kind of doubles up when I get to the location. I've got a sling bag there to carry around my sort of like travel EDC. So really nice to have those double use type of bags. I'll do that sometimes for a tech bag, but I've been exploring options on how best to travel around with my coffee gear. And this is my current favorite. A uh, water bottle because you always got to stay hydrated. 32 ounce swig top bottle. Uh, really love this thing. They have an attachment with a filter as well. If you're going to, you know, questionable water source areas or nasty water areas, even with cities that just have gross water. Uh, really nice, really convenient. It's leak proof, so that's always nice and reassuring before you put it in your bag and risk all of your stuff. Been really happy with that one since it came out. It's definitely my new favorite Lark bottle. Last up, I've got a rain shell to bring with me. Uh, the weather is relatively mild right now, so I didn't worry about packing a full-size jacket, but having a rain shell and that you know alpaca hoodie is going to get me through a broad range of temperatures and i tend to do a lot of stuff outside if there's one just in case type of thing to bring when you're going to be outside a lot it is a rain shell or an umbrella i suppose but this just kind of adds some extra warmth as well to wear as a regular jacket in addition to being a rain shell uh, the tusher rain jacket from outdoor vitals um, really really great quality this is my go-to for outdoor backpacking stuff when the weather is really bad and it can be life or death to stay dry. Um, more than adequate for regular travel and probably a little bit overkill, but if you want something that's really good quality that's gonna last and it's actually going to be waterproof, uh, this one has been great. That actually wraps it up for the loadout. Um, I really hope you enjoyed it. I know it's been some time since I've done you know, a proper full loadout like this. I'm just excited and gearing up for the warmer weather here. You know, we're still getting down into the 30s here in Portland, but I'm just excited and ready to get out and do some traveling, get some sunshine here in Oregon from all of the dreary winter months that we've been going through. Thank you all so much for watching though. I'd love to hear about your travel setups down in the comments. Uh, so leave that for me. Thank you again, and I'll talk to you in the next one.